So now we understand what tensors are, we can go on to discuss a very special tensor, the metric tensor. So, so far we've made the distinction between vectors and dual vectors. We understand vectors as being linear maps from the dual space to the real numbers, or as we saw in the last video, T10 tensors. And likewise, we have the dual vectors are linear maps from the vector space into the real numbers, or T01 tensors. So, so far we have no way of going between the vector space and the dual space. If I give you a vector, there's no way you can tell me what its corresponding dual vector is going to be. So we'll see that the way to go between the vector space and the dual space is using an object which we call the metric tensor. So the metric tensor, which I'm going to call G, is a special type of 0, 2 tensor. So it lives in the space T02. So we know this means that it's an object effectively with two slots waiting to eat two vectors and give us a real number. So this isn't just any 0, 2 tensor. It has to satisfy a few properties in order to make it useful. Namely that it must be symmetric, which simply means that if we plug in two vectors, it doesn't matter which slot they go in, we just get the same result. So the metric must be symmetric. Um, you'll sometimes see the metric called a bilinear form, which is just a fancy word for a linear map which takes two arguments. We're not going to use this terminology because it can sometimes get confusing when we... So this is just a side remark. The metric is sometimes called a bilinear form. We're not going to call it that because it can get confusing when we go on to discuss differential forms, which are sometimes just abbreviated to be called n-forms, where n is the dimensionality of the differential form. So the reason we're not going to use this terminology is because n-forms are anti-symmetric. So if we have, say, a two-form, which is just an object that wants to eat two uh, vectors, to be anti-symmetric just means that when you swap the arguments around, you pick up a minus sign. So to be completely clear, we're not talking about differential forms, we're just talking about 0-2 tensors for now, and the metric is a symmetric 0-2 tensor, whereas a differential form is an anti-symmetric 0-n tensor. So that's a side remark, just so you know, I'm not using the bilinear form language, I'm just going to keep calling the metric a 0-2 tensor. And then the second property that we must have is positive definiteness, meaning that if you plug into the metric any vector and the same vector, this must be greater than 0 technically greater than or equal to, it can only ever be equal to zero if mu is, if the vector is actually zero. So what's so special about this metric tensor? Well, to really understand this, it's helpful to express it in terms of its components. So we know that being a zero two tensor, we can write the metric in terms of some set of components multiplied by two copies of the dual basis taken in a tensor product. And now we understand what this object is. It's just a multilinear map which is waiting for two vector inputs.
So we know that this is waiting to eat two vectors and give us a real number. But now I just want to consider what happens if we only feed the metric a single vector. So that would be the following object. If I now use a function notation, we give the metric one vector input. So we can write this in terms of our basis as the metric components. And now uh, we have the first map, and I'm going to feed the first vector into this map and express this vector in a basis. So that's going to be u, say, and then we just have the second map which has no input. So we know because this is a multilinear map, this scalar component can be pulled out and we're left with. And now, if you remember, when we defined the dual basis and the, the basis vectors, we said that this object is just the Kronecker delta. So now, coming back up here, we perform this sum. The Kronecker delta effectively kills all the terms apart from when a is equal to mu. So we can just rewrite this as first map has gone away and we're just left with one map. So now we really see the utility of this metric. If we redefine now this g mu nu times mu u mu, the, u, the mu's get summed over so we can just call this a new object. I'll call it uh, u twiddle which just has a single lower index because we've summed over this mu index and then the last basis vector. So now we identify this whole object here. This is simply just a dual vector since we just have one copy of the dual basis and some components. This is waiting to eat us. This is waiting to eat a vector and just give us a real number. So this whole thing we can call the dual vector u twiddle. So what we've done, we started with the metric tensor and just fed it a single vector, and the result is the corresponding dual vector to that vector. So we frequently abbreviate the tensor, and we just drop the basis, and we just call the tensor by its components. So if we just write this in components, we see that g mu nu times the vector u. So then we perform the sum, and this just leaves us u nu with the lower index. And I'm giving it a twiddle to let us know it's a dual vector. So this operation is frequently called index lowering. So we see the metric as giving us a way to, given a vector, find out what its corresponding dual vector is. Now there's a slight subtlety I should mention here. This would in fact be true of any 0-2 tensor that you could write down. Any 0-2 tensor, we just now imagine G is some other tensor, T, I can do this exact same construction and get all the way through and find the result just being an object with one lower index. However, this dual vector we would then produce would in general not be effectively the dual vector associated to the vector that we started with. We define the metric in a special way such that we talk about it creating an isomorphism between the vector space and the dual vector space, meaning that if you feed it a single vector, the result is going to be the dual vector associated with that vector. But you could just work the definition the other way around and say that the metric is defined by deciding how a vector is related to its dual vector. So the metric components are chosen in such a way that vectors get turned into their dual vectors when they're multiplied by the metric components. So now just as we have the metric, we can define the so-called inverse metric. This is simply a 2-0 tensor, which is given by 
this 2, 0 tensor works in the exact same way as the metric in that if we feed it, now I should call it something else so we know it's different. If we feed it one now dual vector, the result is just the corresponding vector to that dual vector. And you frequently abbreviate this in terms of the components as simply feed the metric a dual vector inverse metric, sorry, and you just get the resulting vector. So to summarize then, the metric is a special 0, 2 tensor, which we choose its components in such a way that it creates an isomorphism between the vector space and the dual space, which simply means that if we feed the metric a vector, it tells us what its corresponding dual vector should be, and then likewise with the inverse metric, we feed it a dual vector and it tells us the corresponding vector.